guess we will start now. So um, my name is Miley Fu, and uh, I'm the devil and uh, the founding member of the uh, this open source project called the Water Match. So we are a WebAssembly runtime. Uh, we are using WebAssembly on the server side. So uh, that is our GitHub uh, page. And uh, the second one is uh, a large language model unrelated uh, framework we are building on top of WorldMatch. It's also open source. Uh, so today I'm going to majorly talk about uh, open source large language models. Uh, and uh, when we do de de demos later, when we still have time, we would uh, also be using large language models that are open source, majorly hosted on Hugging Face. So this is a report that came out not long ago, and it's um, called uh, 2024 AI Index Report by the uh, Stanford University. So according to that, uh, last year, the uh, trend is that more large language models that are being launched are open sourced. So compared with the year before, there are big increases. Uh, yeah, so now we get into Rust and Wasm. So why not Python? Why Rust and the Wasm? Um, um, so, uh, we are also say, seeing a trend that Rust is getting more popular, even though it's a comparatively new language. Um, so there are also some surveys saying that among younger developers, uh, it's gaining more popularity. So um, like 80, according to the Stack Overflow survey, like 84% uh, of the developers uh, who have used Rust want to use continue to use it in the future. And it's a really beloved language that's get, getting increasing momentum. Uh, so we would argue that Rust uh, is the language of choice for AI or AGI. And because uh, of its very good um, performance uh, and uh, mem memory safety and uh, concurrency features, uh, so this is some post uh, we uh, we this is one article we, we wrote and posted on Hacker News. Uh, that is uh, to show our way of uh, run large language models on Mac and across devices uh, with a, a very tiny WASM file that only two megabytes. Um, so and that's a comment uh, by someone. It sa says that. Uh, Python AI stack can uh, be a big headache. Uh, so why we use WebAssembly on the server side? Uh, it's, a ve it's very good for uh, many use cases like microservices, SaaS, UDF, and streaming data. Um, so on the right is a, a WASM landscape we co-launched with Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So um, it was released last year, I think, uh, at the uh, KubeCon North America. And the, in the ecosystem, there are already so many projects with a total uh, value of 59.4 billion. And um, also among the, uh, I think, last month, the KubeCon EU, uh, according to a like a survey, they have uh, uh, scanned all the uh, eight eight thousand tweets of uh, uh, like that's posted during KubeCon EU, and uh, was one, was the top keywords that mentioned during uh, for uh, of the tweets, and uh, also. Um, the CTO of CNCF, ha uh, Chris, has said that he thinks that WASM combined with CNCF project uh, will be the best runtime for large language models. And um, um, the same attributes that uh, made WASM successful on the client side uh, would be also important for 
uh, server-side use cases because of all the different devices that we are having today. It's not, it's not like before. And also um, for, for cloud, the underlying ar architecture can be quite uh, different. And it's, uh, so the cross-platform uh, cross and port portability of WebAssembly could uh, play a very uh, big role. So, uh, so how WebAssembly was started, so it in 20, uh, 20, uh, is in 2010, it was started as a side project and majorly used in the browser. And five years later, uh, W3C Group has its uh, established, uh, of WebAssembly has its established. And uh, to uh, four years, uh, another four years later, uh, WebAssembly has become the fourth uh, standard for the uh, web, and uh, that um, that's is a big uh, milestone. So uh, also, uh, was was uh, sta started in tw 2019. So um, that's also when WASI is released. So WASI is the standard that helps WebAssembly to talk to a system. So it's a uh, is uh, stand for WebAssembly system interface. So that would allow WebAssembly to access system. And uh, uh, that's when server side WebAssembly is going to mainstream. And uh, uh, so it was started uh, with the pain points that people want to run a very high performance, um, like uh, applications inside the browser and uh, to like compile a high performance language like C, C++, and, and later Rust uh, into WebAssembly and then run it uh, inside browser, given that uh, the user, when they are using browser, their um, systems can be really different. So that's uh, how it gained, uh, how, how it started. But uh, during this process, um, we find that it also would uh, be big uh, for the server side because um, it's uh, like Java, uh, how it was firstly used in the browser and le later migrated to the server side. Um, and you can think of uh, uh, WebAssembly as a Java bytecode and uh, uh, WebAssembly runtime as a J JVM. So uh, uh, WebAssembly versus Linux container, there are a lot of advantages. And uh, if you visit this link, uh, you will see a very detailed comparison. So I will not uh, elaborate too much on that. But uh, WASM um, startup time can be uh, much faster than Linux containers and uh, in terms of code start as well. So um, for your security as well, it's capability-based security. And um, it's not like before uh, with the operating system, uh, it's depend on a user's uh, authority to limit uh, whether the, uh, file, uh, the program can access, but it's when you start this VM, this uh, WebAssembly runtime, you have to declare uh, which it can access. So, um, WebAssembly and also is uh, composable. So uh, like under the uh, serverless uh, scenarios, you can have a lot of different services, but uh, um, these services uh, need to connect to each other and talk to each other. Um, so uh, uh, it's not doable in the traditional uh, containers like Docker. So um, th I think uh, that's a, uh, some saying that's being, I think, said, said every time when, when people are talking about WebAssembly. So that's um, the founder of Docker. He uh, said in 2019 that he thinks, so that's when the uh, WebAssembly system interface was released. He, s he says that um, WebAssembly and was it if ex existed in, back in 2008, um, then we wouldn't have to uh, to ha needed to create Docker, and 
WebAssembly uh, on the server side is the future of uh, computing. And, uh, and later on, he said, like in 2022, he said that Docker can run uh, side by side with what uh, with with Wasm and complement each other, and um, uh, the the OCI can package them all and uh, would be would be able to build and run them all. So um, even uh, so, he recognized that it WebAssembly can be a, a big game cha changer, uh, especially for the cloud native era, and. Um, uh, so actually, um, Docker right now is using um, this web GPU standard to uh, help people to uh, run large lang language models in a containerized environment. So it, uh, even though it's called is web GPU, but it's uh, when Docker are using it, it's not exactly for the browser uh, at all. So the, the name can be uh, very confusing, but um, we are mo mostly using it uh, for the cloud. So uh, this would be a talk that we'll all be giving uh, together with the uh, uh, CTO of Docker, Justin Komrak, in the AI dev uh, happening two months later. So we are exploring together with uh, Docker to uh, combine WebGPU and Wasm to abstract away and unify underlying AI hardware and software stacks so that to allow the uh, large language models uh, applications to be totally portable across different devices. Um, it's, uh, we will uh, demo how the WASM Edge runtime can build on web GPU standard to create portable LLM inference applications in Rust and have those applications uh, seamlessly to be managed and orchestrated by Docker. Um, I guess it's uh, still an ongoing process. And uh, if you are interested, you can uh, pay, uh, maybe subscribe to our newest updates about that. So um, why Wasm for AI? Uh, actually, because I already have a t talk that's a little bit similar yesterday, so I already talked about several points of this. So um, it, it's portable. That's the most uh, things that we emphasize on. And it has zero Python dependency. And it's a containerized uh, binary file that's uh, cloud ready. And it can be managed and orchestrated by Docker or Kubernetes and, or Palman. And uh, it's uh, really fast. The uh, speed uh, can be uh, like uh, what I've mentioned just now, uh, much faster than the traditional way uh, of uh, Linux containers. And um, as for the size, uh, it's uh, even with the dependency, it's um, 30, less than 30 megabytes compared with maybe four gigabytes Python and like uh, 300 megabytes lama.cpp and uh, also is a very secure environment it's an uh, is this isolation is uh, also similar to the isolation that provi provided by docker container but uh, it's achieved at the ap application binary level with potentially lower overhead and tighter security controls so as i said it's a, a very fine grained uh, permission system, so uh, it only can access to the resources that are, they are explicitly told to use. And also it's polyglot, but, but the uh, languages that they uh, wasn't support most uh, well is uh, uh, Rust, uh, C, C, C++. So uh, compared with Python, uh, there are these uh, advantages and um, uh, I already talked a little bit about. So um, for compute, it's uh, 10,000 times faster and compa uh, compared with uh, C native code, uh, it's uh, much safer. So um, also for the performance, uh, because due to security and the portability requirement, native binaries are often 
required to run inside a uh, Linux container. So uh, such containers can be big, so have a lot of overhead to uh, the program that is slowing down, um, so slowing them down dramatically. And uh, yeah, uh, as I have always been emphasized on, the um, portability can be really important uh, because uh, nowadays we have all the different kind of uh, GPUs, CPUs, TPUs, MPUs. So um, once you compile your program into Watson, it can be deployed across those environments without any kind of modica uh, modification or re recompile. Uh, it's a very simplified uh, deployment and you can train, uh, build and train your models on your preferred platform like your Mac and then easily deploy them across hardwares and the op operating systems. So uh, this would eliminate the need for multiple code bases or the complex course compilation often required for AI applications. Um, so we are achieving this uh, through this WASI-NN standard. Uh, it's a WebAssembly System Interface Neural Network. Uh, it's a, a high-level bindings for writing WASI-NN applications. Um, so uh, we would uh, we have already supported the major AI frameworks like uh, OpenVINO, TensorFlow, PyTorch, and uh, integrated Lama.cpp as the back backend. And uh, uh, Lama CPP is uh, uh, influencing Lama models in pure C, so no, no Python. And uh, so Wasm for AI has mm, much benefit like I have mentioned. Uh, I, I think it's uh, one important thing is that it's an abstraction layer from AI applications over the underlying GPUs and driver libraries. So it supports a lot of uh, CPUs and hardware accelerators and uh, support op optimized inference libraries with uh, a wide selection of AI and large language models. So any um, large language, open source la large language models that, that um, are in GGUF uh, format on, uh, on the uh, hugging phase is supported. So you can run any of that. So, uh, and as, uh, so there, there is a small bit demo about uh, how to manage it in the uh, Kubernetes ecosystem. So that's a uh, demo that you can check out your, uh, later. And so, um, yeah, let's get into Watson plus Rust for AI agent. Uh, so I, I think I will do a bit of demo. Uh, so, uh, so on the first page, I already uh, listed the GitHub repo of Lama Edge. So that's built on top of Watson Edge. So it's a uh, uh, it's a series of tools that help you to run customized and fine-tuned large language model uh, lo locally or on the edge. So we write uh, the program in Rust and then compile the uh, Rust program into WebAssembly. And, uh, and there are several. So uh, the, uh, that is the one shell script that you can use to uh, run several commands in one go that helps you to start a self-hosted uh, large language model for yourself to try out in a, in a very short time. So you can try it out yourself. Even the, uh, so your devices can be uh, not even M1 series of Mac uh, because the laptop I'm using now is uh, only a CPU Mac. So I will show you later. So um, it's, uh, uh, by default, it will mm, help you download the Gemma 2B model into your device, and uh, you can uh, start to chat, chat with it uh, in your browser. So um, I guess instead of just run this single command, uh, the, the, the shell script, I will just break it down and to uh, show you what exactly they are. So yeah, and that, as I mentioned, that's the Config, uh, that's the uh, configuration of my com my own device. It's um, uh, 16 gig gigabytes RAM. 
uh, that's the device I'm using. So I I don't know exactly whether I, if this will work, but I originally intend to show you the portability by SCP. This uh, was a file that I'm gonna to I'm gonna demo to another uh, remote device. Uh, that's another like as Nvidia uh, with uh, 64 gigabytes RAM. Uh, I, I hopefully it can work. So yeah, let me start. Uh, so I already have downloaded the Llama 2 chat models onto my machine. And uh, let me show you the, okay, terminal. Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, yeah, I will turn, I think, uh, it's terminated or not. Let me restart. Yeah. Mm. So this. So I already downloaded several different models from Hacking Face. They're uh, all in GUF format. So I'll, I'll show you. Um, so after you have downloaded this, and then you need to download what the was the match on time. Uh, after that, you can just run one command. Uh, that So this command will help you to uh, start an API server. Oh, that, that's, that's a Llama chat one. API server. Mm. So this is not the API server command. Let me find that. Okay. I guess I, I will try this one instead, Gemma2D. So this would uh, help you to start an API server that's compatible with OpenAI. Uh, yeah, so now I have uh, started this uh, API server that I can talk to it, so that I can talk to it on my local machine. So yeah, this is what I tried before, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, we can ask some questions. Or we, or we can just do it in our com like terminal, but uh, yeah, we will try it in the browser. Um, what is uh, the best restaurant? Uh, best uh, bar in Seattle. So uh, for the first answer, it can be slower because uh, it need to load the model into its memory. Um, yeah, so that's totally uh, running on my own machine and uh, uh, using using uh, so the the API wasn't was a um, program that we uh, wrote in Rust and compiled into Wasm. And it's fully compatible, me, uh, fu fully po portable, meaning I can SCP it uh, into a remote machine and run, uh, as long as that machine also have the ex a same, uh, any model actually uh, downloaded, it can, um, it can run as well. Uh, let me try the SCP. Mm, I think this, I need to go to log into the, uh, let me go into the, let's get a new window. So SCP. Okay, so now I'm in the JSON device. Um, 
our SCP that uh, I think I've showed right. So our SCP this API server wasn't filed to uh, this machine. Let me find the command. The command should be here. Oh, permission denied. Why? Uh, it could be I copied more than I should have. Okay. Oh, it should uh, it should be still this here. Oh, so yeah, I did the, the the other way around. So I need to put the command here, not there. So I SCP the wasn't file to to the JSON device and then I run the same command, I should be able to uh, also run it because it's already has uh, the um, where are those? I guess I will also download and gemma to be into the machine right now, I guess, because it shows it doesn't have the model file. Um, gemma to be here, it's download the gemma to be GDF file. Yeah, it takes a while to download, but I guess only one minute. So while we are downloading that, we will proceed uh, with our my, our presentation. Um, yeah, it's uh, one minute left, so let's pr proceed with our presentation first. Uh, yeah, uh, so uh, you can also write your own uh, API server. Uh, like with ref reference to the code that we r wrote. And uh, also it can be used to run the uh, Elon Musk's uh, 314 billion parameter graph. So uh, that's on GPU. Let me show you the video. So because it's so big, it's um, kind of slow. So. Uh, for this demo, it's um, as slow as only one token a minute. You can see it's pretty slow. Uh, but if you use better devices, I guess you can get higher performance. So it's also using the same API server that I showed you. Um, uh, I mean, API server uh, wasn't program that compiled from Rust I showed you. Um, yeah, so uh, it would show you the, the speed, I think, somewhere. But uh, yeah, you can see it's, uh, yeah, I think I will not play it all. So as I mentioned, uh, any uh, Hugging Face GUF uh, models will work, and uh, uh, that's um, you. So to break down the command, 
The first is uh, the Watson Edge uh, runtime to start the runtime and uh, directory, and then uh, to load the Watson Edge machine learning plugin uh, with a GGML backend and uh, to enable automatically uh, automatic hardware ac acceleration. And then Llama 2-7B-chat uh, dash dash and all that is the name of the large language model that you downloaded. And then the, oh, th this one is the Llama chat. So this is another one uh, different from the um, API server Warden file. So that allows you to chat with, the, chat with the large language model on your terminal. So uh, if you change it to Llama dash API dash server, that would be the one that we used just now for the demo. So, and later that would be prompt templates. Uh, and uh, yeah, that would be what this command is about. So if you don't have the model in a GUF format, we also have a tutorial to uh, let you uh, know how to convert a PyTorch format model into GGUF. So we should think of this uh, as a dev platform that you can use to write your own uh, uh, diff like uh, API server to serve different needs. Um, you can bo uh, build a single portable and deployable app and uh, improve your efficiency. So uh, it's not designed to be a standalone API server like what I've showed you just now. So you can extend, uh, like write your own code, extend it and customize and build your own application on top of it. So if you think about how large language model application are built today, uh, it is typically uh, you have an application server that provide API. It's, uh, it's either open AI, right? Or some other SaaS providers, or, uh, you can, or you can like replace it with your own. Um, it's, uh, you can like, uh, like using Llama Edge, you, uh, you can write your own API server using Llama Edge and provide an open AI compatible API server. And so in a, um, instead of uh, uh, using a relatively heavy weight, weight slack, uh, stack, tech stack, like Python or LangChain, you, there are a lot of tools to help you to use uh, LangChain or Llama index, but, uh, and you, like you have to have your own UI and uh, a web server and uh, all those components uh, maybe contained in a Docker file. So uh, you have to work uh, to tie them together and build, build an entire application uh, with a lot of work. But uh, if you use Llama Edge, it would uh, give you a lot of flexibility and uh, you can experiment with different um, parts. So, um, uh, and uh, what you have would uh, be a fully portable uh, Watson application and uh, uh, with zero Python dependency. So, um, yeah, uh, because we are using Rust SDK and uh, it would allow you to uh, write all your logics into one single application. So no need to um, write a part of the logic in C++ uh, or, and glue them together with Python. So uh, you don't need to do any of those and uh, it can be really faster to deploy and uh, uh, that would help you to simplify the entire workflow. So. Uh, so I guess the next steps would be you can use, uh, you can create a chatbot using the chatbot UI framework that we have and uh, or create a rack application using LangChain or um, Llama index, but we do not recommend that given all the uh, disadvantages that I mentioned. So uh, there is some um, options that's built purely with Rust and Wasm that is 
a serverless platform called Flowstore Network. So you can also build a, a AI uh, agent on top of that. So um, yeah, uh, we also have another end user that's been using uh, Llama Edge that I talked about. So that this is an open source a knowledge-based uh, large language model plus RAG server. So uh, there are a lot of words I know. Uh, so you just uh, need to, uh, it's also, even though it uh, looks a lot, but it's really simple. Uh, it's like you can just run one command as well and then it will help you to start a node. Uh, uh, a software stack that, uh, in a sing uh, and then you can uh, have a, AP, uh, a public uh, URL that you can uh, provide. It's, it is self-hosted and you can provide to, uh, to the public. So uh, it give you a public uh, URL. And um, it's a, um, fully compatible also with the OpenAI JSON spec. And uh, it uh, can also serve as an alternative backend for OpenAI based front end or agent. Uh, yeah, so I guess we will go back to whether we have this downloaded this. Yeah, I think it, it's completed. So we have already downloaded the uh, model as well. So I guess we will run this command to see whether it works. It's Gemma, right? I think I downloaded Gemma. Yeah, Gemma 2B. Yeah, it works. Oh, no. Oh, why? 4096, context sense. Yeah, and then you copied it once you accepted it. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh -huh, I don't know why. Maybe it's because of the memory that's allocated to me is not enough. In use? Oh, in use, right? In it's someone is in using it? Oh, I guess in use. So I guess someone is using the machine right now. Um, yeah, but it should work. So <laughs> I'm sorry that uh, the demo is not perfect. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I guess that would be, uh, that would be it. Um, you can build your own AI agent around it. Uh, and uh, also for, uh, also we have provided documentation about how to uh, turn your own material uh, into uh, into in vectorized embeddings that you can, so that you can build a rack uh, around it and um, uh, give your lar self hosted uh, large language model domain expertise. Uh, so let me go back to. I will not fight with <laughs> that. So I'm giving up. Uh, yeah. So this is the two project I just uh, talked about. Um, yeah, uh, I think at the end I would like to, because um, we are fully open source and uh, we do t take part uh, in the Linux Foundation mentorship program every year, three times a year. So that would give us, uh, actually for every term, like uh, we would have four chance to uh, post some interesting project to hire interns. So that uh, would, uh, so every year we would have 12 interns. And you, if you are interested, you can check them out and uh, see if you want to apply. And um, for also, 
uh, we are taking part in Google Summer of Code and Google Season of Doc, Doc Season of Doc, yeah. And, um, or you can just uh, start with uh, some good first issues to see if you can uh, contribute. And um, yeah, that would, uh, oh, right. I, I would like to mention that we are having an ongoing uh, incentive that is to uh, award the new contributors some uh, Linux Foundation certification voucher or like course voucher. So if you're interested, you can also check it out. It's uh, the top tweet on our uh, Second State official tweet. So Second State is a company that's um, behind the Water Match project. Yeah, I guess that would be my presentation. And uh, these are some uh, resources that, that I use, some documentation for you to check out. And um, uh, yeah, I, I guess let's stay in touch. Uh, this is my Git, uh, GitHub uh, handle and Twitter handle. And uh, these are some of the uh, dev events that we host. Uh, yeah, so if you're interested in Rust, you can submit a talk and uh, yeah, we can discuss further. Thank you. <laughs>